a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. France France, officially the French Republic, is a country whose territory consists of metropolitan France in Western Europe and several overseas regions and territories. The metropolitan area of France extends from the Mediterranean Sea to the English Channel and the North Sea, and from the Rhine to the Atlantic Ocean. The overseas territories include French Guiana in South America, and several islands in the Atlantic, Pacific and Indian Oceans. The country's 18 integral regions span a combined area of 643,801 square kilometers and a total population of 67.25 million. The sovereign state of France is a unitary semi-presidential republic with its capital in Paris, the country's largest city and main cultural and commercial center. Other major urban areas include Lyon, Marseille, Toulouse, Bordeaux, Lille, and Nice. During the Iron Age, what is now metropolitan France was inhabited by the Gauls, a Celtic people. Rome annexed the area in 51 BC, holding it until the arrival of Germanic Franks in 476, who formed the Kingdom of France. France emerged as a major European power in the late Middle Ages following its victory in the Hundred Years' War. During the Renaissance, French culture flourished, and a global colonial empire was established which by the 20th century would become the second largest in the world. The 16th century was dominated by religious civil wars between Catholics and Protestants. France became Europe's dominant cultural, political, and military power in the 17th century under Louis XIV. In the late 18th century, the French Revolution overthrew the absolute monarchy, established one of modern history's earliest republics, and saw the drafting of the Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen, which expresses the nation's ideals to this day. In the 19th century, Napoleon took power and established the First French Empire. His subsequent Napoleonic Wars shaped the course of continental Europe. Following the collapse of the empire, France endured a tumultuous succession of governments culminating with the establishment of the French Third Republic in 1870. France was a major participant in World War I, from which it emerged victorious, and was one of the Allies in World War II, but came under occupation by the Axis powers in 1940. Following liberation in 1944, a Fourth Republic was established and later dissolved in the course of the Algerian War. The Fifth Republic, led by Charles de Gaulle, was formed in 1958 and remains today. Algeria and nearly all the other colonies became independent in the 1960s and typically retained close economic and military connections with France. France has long been a global center of art, science, and philosophy. It hosts the world's fourth largest number of UNESCO World Heritage Sites and is the leading tourist destination. Receiving around 83 million foreign visitors annually, France is a developed country with the world's seventh largest economy by nominal GDP and ninth largest by purchasing power parity. In terms of aggregate household wealth, it ranks fourth in the world. France performs well in international rankings of education, health care, life expectancy, and human development. France is considered a great power in the world, being one of the five permanent members of the United Nations Security Council with the power to veto and an official nuclear weapon state. It is a leading member state of the European Union and the Eurozone and a member of the Group of Seven, North Atlantic Treaty Organization, Organization for Economic Company Operation and Development, the World Trade Organization, and La Francophonie. Etymology Originally applied to the whole Frankish Empire, the name, France, comes from the Latin, or, country of the Franks. Modern France is still named today, Francia, in Italian and Spanish, Frankreich, in German and Frankrijk, in Dutch, all of which have more or less the same historical meaning. There are various theories as to the origin of the name Frank. Following the precedence of Edward Gibbon and Jacob Grimm, the name of the Franks has been linked with the word Frank in English. It has been suggested that the meaning of, free, was adopted because, after the conquest of Gaul, only Franks were free of taxation. Another theory is that it is derived from the Proto-Germanic word Frankon, which translates as javelin or lance as the throwing axe of the Franks was known as a Francisca. 
However, it has been determined that these weapons were named because of their use by the Franks, not the other way around. Prehistory Before the 6th century BC, the oldest traces of human life in what is now France date from approximately 1.8 million years ago. Humans were then confronted by a harsh and variable climate, marked by several glacial eras. Early hominids led a nomadic hunter-gatherer life. France has a large number of decorated caves from the Upper Paleolithic era, including one of the most famous and best preserved, Lascaux. At the end of the last glacial period, the climate became milder. From approximately 7000 BC, this part of Western Europe entered the Neolithic era and its inhabitants became sedentary. After strong demographic and agricultural development between the 4th and 3rd millennia, metallurgy appeared at the end of the 3rd millennium, initially working gold, copper and bronze, and later iron. France has numerous megalithic sites from the Neolithic period, including the exceptionally dense Karnak stone site. Antiquity, 6th century BC, 5th century AD. In 600 BC, Ionian Greeks, originating from Phocia, founded the colony of Massalia, on the shores of the Mediterranean Sea. This makes it France's oldest city. At the same time, some Gallic Celtic tribes penetrated parts of the current territory of France, and this occupation spread to the rest of France between the 5th and 3rd century BC. The concept of Gaul emerged at that time. It corresponds to the territories of Celtic settlement ranging between the Rhine, the Atlantic Ocean, the Pyrenees and the Mediterranean. The borders of modern France are roughly the same as those of ancient Gaul, which was inhabited by Celtic Gauls. Gaul was then a prosperous country, of which the southernmost part was heavily subject to Greek and Roman cultural and economic influences. Around 125 BC, the south of Gaul was conquered by the Romans, who called this region Provincia Nostra, which over time evolved into the name Provence in French. Julius Caesar conquered the remainder of Gaul and overcame a revolt carried out by the Gallic chieftain Vercingetorix in 52 BC. Gaul was divided by Augustus into Roman provinces. Many cities were founded during the Gallo-Roman period, including Lugdunum, which is considered the capital of the Gauls. These cities were built in traditional Roman style, with a forum, a theatre, a circus, an amphitheatre and thermal baths. The Gauls mixed with Roman settlers, and eventually adopted Roman culture and Roman speech. The Roman polytheism merged with the Gallic paganism into the same syncretism. From the 250s to the 280s AD, Roman Gaul suffered a serious crisis with its fortified borders being attacked on several occasions by barbarians. Nevertheless, the situation improved in the first half of the 4th century, which was a period of revival and prosperity for Roman Gaul. In 312, Emperor Constantine I converted to Christianity. Subsequently, Christians, who had been persecuted until then, increased rapidly across the entire Roman Empire. But, from the beginning of the 5th century, the barbarian invasions resumed, and Germanic tribes, such as the Vandals, Swaby and Alans crossed the Rhine and settled in Gaul, Spain and other parts of the collapsing Roman Empire. Early Middle Ages, 5th century 10th century At the end of the Antiquity period, ancient Gaul was divided into several Germanic kingdoms and a remaining Gallo-Roman territory, known as the Kingdom of Siogrus. Simultaneously, Celtic Britons, fleeing the Anglo-Saxon settlement of Britain, settled the western part of Armorica. As a result, the Armorican Peninsula was renamed Brittany. Celtic culture was revived and independent petty kingdoms arose in this region. The pagan Franks, from whom the ancient name of Franci was derived, originally settled the north part of Gaul, but under Clovis I conquered most of the other kingdoms in northern and central Gaul. In 498, Clovis I was the first Germanic conqueror after the fall of the Roman Empire to convert to Catholic Christianity, rather than Arianism. Thus France was given the title, eldest daughter of the church, by the papacy. And French kings would be called, the most Christian kings of France. The Franks embraced the Christian Gallo-Roman culture and ancient Gaul was eventually renamed Francia. The Germanic Franks adopted Romanic languages, 
except in northern Gaul where Roman settlements were less dense and where Germanic languages emerged. Clovis made Paris his capital and established the Merovingian dynasty, but his kingdom would not survive his death. The Franks treated land purely as a private possession and divided it among their heirs. So four kingdoms emerged from Clovis, Paris, Orléans, Soissons, and Reims. The last Merovingian kings lost power to their mayors of the palace. One mayor of the palace, Charles Martel, defeated an Islamic invasion of Gaul at the Battle of Tours and earned respect and power within the Frankish kingdoms. His son, Pepa the Short, seized the crown of Francia from the weakened Merovingians and founded the Carolingian dynasty. Pepin's son, Charlemagne, reunited the Frankish kingdoms and built a vast empire across Western and Central Europe, proclaimed Holy Roman Emperor by Pope Leo III and thus establishing in earnest the French government's long-time historical association with the Catholic Church. Charlemagne tried to revive the Western Roman Empire and its cultural grandeur. Charles Magnus' son, Louis I, kept the empire united. However, this Carolingian empire would not survive his death. In 843, under the Treaty of Verdun, the empire was divided between Louis III's sons, with East Francia going to Louis the German, Middle Francia to Lothair I, and West Francia to Charles the Bald. West Francia approximated the area occupied by, and was the precursor, to modern France. During the 9th and 10th centuries, continually threatened by Viking invasions, France became a very decentralized state, the nobility's titles and lands became hereditary, and the authority of the king became more religious than secular and thus was less effective, and constantly challenged by powerful noblemen. Thus was established feudalism in France. Over time, some of the king's vassals would grow so powerful that they often posed a threat to the king. For example, after the Battle of Hastings in 1066, William the Conqueror added, King of England, to his titles, becoming both the vassal to and the equal of the King of France, creating recurring tensions. Late Middle Ages, 10th century 15th century The Carolingian dynasty ruled France until 987, when Hugh Capet, Duke of France and Count of Paris, was crowned King of the Franks. His descendants the Capetians, the House of Valois, and the House of Bourbon progressively unified the country through wars and dynastic inheritance into the Kingdom of France, which was fully declared in 1190 by Philip II Augustus. The French nobility played a prominent role in most crusades in order to restore Christian access to the Holy Land. French knights made up the bulk of the steady flow of reinforcements throughout the 200-year span of the Crusades in such a fashion that the Arabs uniformly referred to the Crusaders as French caring little whether they really came from France. The French Crusaders also imported the French language into the Levant, making French the base of the lingua franca of the Crusader states. French knights also made up the majority in both the hospital and the temple orders. The latter, in particular, held numerous properties throughout France, and by the 13th century were the principal bankers for the French crown until Philip IV annihilated the order in 1307. The Albigensian Crusade was launched in 1209 to eliminate the heretical Cathars in the southwestern area of modern-day France. In the end, the Cathars were exterminated, and the autonomous county of Toulouse was annexed into the crown lands of France. Later kings expanded their domain to cover over half of modern continental France, including most of the north, center and west of France. Meanwhile, the royal authority became more and more assertive, centered on a hierarchically conceived society distinguishing nobility, clergy, and commoners. Charles IV the Fair died without an heir in 1328. Under the rules of the Salic law the Crown of France could not pass to a woman nor could the line of kingship pass through the female line. Accordingly, the crown passed to Philip of Valois, a cousin of Charles, rather than through the female line to Charles' nephew. Edward, who would soon become Edward III of England. During the reign of Philip of Valois, the French monarchy reached the height of its medieval power. Philip's seat on the throne was contested by Edward III of England and in 1337, on the eve of the first wave of the Black Death, England and France went to war in what would become known as the Hundred Years' War. The exact boundaries changed greatly with time, but French landholdings of the English kings remained extensive for decades.
with charismatic leaders, such as Joan of Arc and La Haya. Strong French counterattacks won back English continental territories. Like the rest of Europe, France was struck by the Black Death. Half of the 17 million population of France died. Early Modern Period, 15th Century 1789 Colon Main Articles, French Renaissance, Early Modern France French Wars of Religion and Ancien Regime The French Renaissance saw a spectacular cultural development and the first standardization of the French language, which would become the official language of France and the language of Europe's aristocracy. It also saw a long set of wars, known as the Italian Wars, between France, Spain, and the Holy Roman Empire, refusing to accept the Spanish-Portuguese claims of supremacy in the New World. King Francis I ordered his privateers to sail against his Spanish rival, King Charles V, who ruled as Holy Roman Emperor from 1519 until 1556. The Emperor's realm extended from Spain to parts of what are now Italy, Austria, Germany, Belgium and the Netherlands. French explorers, such as Jacques Cartier or Samuel de Champlain, claimed lands in the Americas for France, paving the way for the expansion of the first French colonial empire. The rise of Protestantism in Europe led France to a civil war known as the French Wars of Religion, where, in the most notorious incident, thousands of Huguenots were murdered in the Saint Bartholomew's Day Massacre of 1572. The Wars of Religion were rendered by Henry of Zedict of Nantes, which granted some freedom of religion to the Huguenots. Under Louis XIII, the energetic Cardinal Richelieu promoted the centralization of the state and reinforced the royal power by disarming domestic power holders in the 1620s. He systematically destroyed castles of defiant lords and denounced the use of private violence. By the end of 1620s, Richelieu established the royal monopoly of force as the doctrine. During Louis XIV's minority and the regency of Queen Anne and Cardinal Mazarin, a period of trouble known as the Fronde occurred in France, which was at that time at war with Spain. This rebellion was driven by the great feudal lords and sovereign courts as a reaction to the rise of royal absolute power in France. The monarchy reached its peak during the 17th century and the reign of Louis XIV, by turning powerful feudal lords into courtiers at the Palace of Versailles. Louis XIV's personal power became unchallenged. Remembered for his numerous wars, he made France the leading European power. France became the most populous country in Europe and had tremendous influence over European politics, economy, and culture. French became the most used language in diplomacy, science, literature and international affairs, and remained so until the 20th century. France obtained many overseas possessions in the Americas, Africa, and Asia. Louis XIV also revoked the Edict of Nantes, forcing thousands of Huguenots into exile. Under Louis XV, Louis XIV's great-grandson, France lost New France and most of its Indian possessions after its defeat in the Seven Years' War, which ended in 1763. Its European territory kept growing, however, with notable acquisitions such as Lorraine and Corsica. An unpopular king, Louis XV's weak rule, his ill-advised financial, political and military decisions as well as the debauchery of his court discredited the monarchy which arguably paved the way for the French Revolution 15 years after his death. Louis XVI, Louis XV's grandson, actively supported the Americans, who were seeking their independence from Great Britain. The financial crisis that followed France's involvement in the American Revolutionary War was one of many contributing factors to the French Revolution. Much of the Enlightenment occurred in French intellectual circles, and major scientific breakthroughs and inventions such as the discovery of oxygen and the first hot air balloon carrying passengers, were achieved by French scientists. French explorers, such as Bougainville and Le Perraus, took part in the voyages of scientific exploration through maritime expeditions around the globe. The Enlightenment philosophy, in which reason is advocated as the primary source for legitimacy and authority, undermined the power of and support for the monarchy and helped pave the way for the French Revolution. Revolutionary France, 1789-1799
facing financial troubles, King Louis XVI summoned the Estates General in May 1789 to propose solutions to his government. As it came to an impasse, the representatives of the Third Estate formed into a national assembly, signaling the outbreak of the French Revolution. Fearing that the king would suppress the newly created National Assembly, insurgents stormed the Bastille on 14 July 1789, a date which would become France's National Day. In early August 1789, the National Constituent Assembly abolished the privileges of the nobility such as personal serfdom and exclusive hunting rights. Through the Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen France established fundamental rights for men. The Declaration affirms, the natural and imprescriptible rights of man, to liberty, property, security and resistance to oppression. Freedom of speech and press were declared, and arbitrary arrests outlawed. It called for the destruction of aristocratic privileges and proclaimed freedom and equal rights for all men, as well as access to public office based on talent rather than birth. In November 1789, the Assembly decided to nationalize and sell all property of the Roman Catholic Church which had been the largest landowner in the country. In July 1790, a civil constitution of the clergy reorganized the French Catholic Church, cancelling the authority of the church to levy taxes, etc. This fueled much discontent in parts of France, which would contribute to the civil war breaking out some years later. While King Louis XVI still enjoyed popularity among the population, his disastrous flight to Varennes seemed to justify rumors he had tied his hopes of political salvation to the prospects of foreign invasion. His credibility was so deeply undermined that the abolition of the monarchy and establishment of a republic became an increasing possibility. In August 1791, the Emperor of Austria and the King of Prussia in the declaration of Pilnitz threatened revolutionary France to intervene by force of arms to restore the French absolute monarchy. In September 1791, the National Constituent Assembly forced King Louis XVI to accept the French Constitution of 1791, thus turning the French absolute monarchy into a constitutional monarchy. In the newly established Legislative Assembly, enmity developed and deepened between a group, later called the Girondins, who favored war with Austria and Prussia, and a group later called Montagnids or Jacobins, who opposed such a war. A majority in the assembly in 1792 however saw a war with Austria and Prussia as a chance to boost the popularity of the revolutionary government, and thought that France would win a war against those gathered monarchies. On 20 April 1792, therefore, they declared war on Austria. On 10 August 1792, an angry crowd threatened the palace of King Louis XVI, who took refuge in the legislative assembly. A Prussian army invaded France later in August 1792. In early September, Parisians, infuriated by the Prussian army capturing Verdun and counter-revolutionary uprisings in the west of France, murdered between 1,000 and 1,500 prisoners by raiding the Parisian prisons. The Assembly and the Paris City Council seemed unable to stop the bloodshed. The National Convention, chosen in the first elections under male universal suffrage, on 20 September 1792 succeeded the Legislative Assembly and on 21 September abolished the monarchy by proclaiming the French First Republic. Ex-King Louis XVI was convicted of treason and guillotined in January 1793. France had declared war on England and the Dutch Republic in November 1792 and did the same on Spain in March 1793. In the spring of 1793, Austria, Great Britain and the Dutch Republic invaded France. In March, France created a sister republic in the Republic of Mainz. Also in March 1793, the civil war of the Vendée against Paris started, evoked by both the civil constitution of the clergy of 1790 and the nationwide army conscription early 1793. Elsewhere in France rebellion was brewing too. A factionalist feud in the National Convention, smouldering ever since October 1791, came to a climax with the group of the Girondins on 2 June 1793 being forced to resign and leave the Convention. The counter-revolution, begun in March 1793 in the Vendée, by July had spread to Brittany, Normandy, Bordeaux, Marseille, Toulon, Lyon, 
Paris Convention government between October and December 1793 with brutal measures managed to subdue most internal uprisings, at the cost of tens of thousands of lives. Some historians consider the civil war to have lasted until 1796 with a toll of possibly 450,000 lives. France in February 1794 abolished slavery in its American colonies, but would reintroduce it later. Political disagreements and enmity in the National Convention between October 1793 and July 1794 reached unprecedented levels, leading to dozens of convention members being sentenced to death and guillotined. Meanwhile, France's external wars in 1794 were going prosperous, for example in Belgium. In 1795, the government seemed to return to indifference towards the desires and needs of the lower classes concerning freedom of religion and fair distribution of food. Until 1799, politicians, apart from inventing a new parliamentary system, busied themselves with dissuading the people from Catholicism and from royalism. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries. Would you like to know more?